So we're sitting there, and at one point, as the fire's coming up, we're literally trying to blow it back down with C4. Yeah, 68 Christmas, for sure. West into Laos, there were targets. And at that point in time, there was uh, fuel lines coming in, and there had been a lot of enemy activity. We lost a recon team a month earlier that was severely banged up. We lost a couple of men on that mission. And they were trying to find out what was going on. So on this mission, we were scheduled to go in, get to a mountaintop, and get inserted in the early afternoon, find a good RON, and then move and just do an area recon, try to find the fuel lines, and to monitor what was going on with enemy activity. They knew there were some trails, and we were going to insert on the mountain. Well, Johnson had enacted the bombing pause in 68. And so by Christmas of 68, the NVA were bringing more of the heavy anti-aircraft artillery and other anti-aircraft weapons that were beginning to surface in the DMZ and along the Ho Chi Minh Trail further south. So when we did the insertion, instead of being high up like usual, where particularly when we had the king bees, the king bees would always come in and they would spiral into the LZ and then flare at the last second out the door. Well, for this target, because of the anti-aircraft, they determined not to come in high. We flew along the DMZ, and then we got to the target area. They literally turned right, headed north, and went up this mountain range. So instead of going all the way to the top, there was a knoll, and they dropped us on this knoll. So we had a six-man team. We got out, and to the west, it was steep down. To the south, it was steep. And to the northwest, it was very steep. And to the northeast, there was like a passage and then strictly to the east. And we were in elephant grass that was 10 to 12 feet tall. So we moved east and I wanted to get into the jungle off that knoll and then head up the mountain to try to get the RO in that night on the mountaintop. Well, we went off. We only went a short distance. Fook made contact with the NVA. We got pushed back. We were thinking about maybe trying to go up to the northeast, but it was quiet. And it's kind of like, well, you know how it is? Sometimes things are too quiet. And Lynn Black said, we don't want to go there. If it's so quiet, they got to be setting up an ambush. At that time, Spider Parks was flying Covey. He calls down and says, do not go to the northeast. We had an intel report that they're setting up an ambush for your recon team. Now, I never had anything like that kind of immediate intel from the field. And um, what had happened was another recon team, Doug Letourneau and ST Virginia, was on another hilltop, maybe 20 clicks away. But they picked up an NVH radio transmission. He put the interpreter on, and the interpreter said, they're going to ambush Idaho. Now, the NVA knew our recon team name, first of all. And they were talking about the, that. So he told Spider, Spider tells me. So we're now on that knoll. We can't go west or south. And we had a little firefight going. And then we threw some hand grenades and that ignited a fire in the elephant grass. And the NVA saw the fire and they went south of us and started some fires. And the wind was blowing the fire up that little knoll towards us. So we're sitting there, and at one point, as the fire's coming up, we're literally trying to blow it back down with C4. So all of us had singed hair and <laughs> a lot of smoke inhalation, and we're there. I declared a prairie fire emergency, told Spider what the condition was. And when all this was going on, at one point, I felt a, <laughs> a leech getting close to Mr. Happy. So I literally had to drop my pants and hit the leash to get him off before he attacked my brain cells, you know? <laughs> so all this is going on, Lynn and his guys are making fun of me in the middle end of this little firefight. The fire's coming up the hill, and at the last second, Captain Tuong, the King Bee pilot who inserted us, he came down the mountain sideways. He hovered and then almost landed on the, on the LZ 
His prop wars literally blew back all the flames. And we jumped on the helicopter and when we took off, whoosh, the whole hill became engulfed in flames. It was that close. It was the hottest Christmas day I ever had before or since then. <laughs> and we just thanked the Lord, you know, uh, for, for Captain Tuong. And this is the same captain who, um, one time I got tied upside down in my rig and the uh, my Swiss seat was down by my feet. He was able to land before I passed out. So, you know, again, it's just an example of how they saved our lives so many times. And uh, here's a ment you talk about mental state. After the shower that night, I'm walking back to my hooch and I can hear us a little cheap, tinny transistor radio, silent night. So I just stopped on my tracks. I'm thinking about Trenton, my family, what we normally did at Christmas. And at this point, I really hadn't thought about Christmas much, you know? And I'm standing there going like, man, this has been crazy. Thanksgiving Day, we had the Echo 4 mission, upside down. And I'm going, I don't know if I'm going to see my birthday or not. But we got to just keep marching here. And my birthday was January the 19th. I was really, we had been in so much shit. I didn't really know if we'd get there or not. Thank you.